Okay, I'm going to get underway. I'll see you in a little while. All right. <coughs> Enjoy. Enjoy. If you have time, times when you are agitated, times when you feel lazy, or times where you feel depressed or even have anxiety, times in your life when you are not 
working at your full capacity, maybe through illness or, let us say, mental restriction, emotional challenges, difficulties which are not your doing. If you face a situation that is rather daunting or complicated, if you just do not know what to do, then you need meditation. There are times in your life where the agitated mind creates anxiety within you, challenges on the outside of you, and difficult situations you must address. At these times, you need meditation. All people will suffer at times with a selection, if not all of these problems I mentioned. A meditation you, you are thinking is a, is it a fix all? It is a band-aid, is it a solution? which you see meditation stills the mind. It stills it so that you may see through the situation at hand. Now, of course, that is relatively easy, I would hope, for you to understand regarding some of the situations or feelings I have mentioned. But meditation will also help you to see through the illusion, to see heaven on earth, to see beyond the play, to see the deity rather than the person. to see the reality, the truth. It is your mind that causes the block. It is the mind then that creates a bigger block. And a mind then that reinforces the false beliefs that matter is all and spirit is not to be found anywhere. Every flower is an expression of spirit, an ambassador. Every person is another being which is formless. Every challenge in your life from the grumpy person to the joyous, to the challenge to the rich, are uh, just a bubble within the consciousness glass. With time, with dedication and effort, with a guide to point you in your direction, to ease you through. And to lead you on. Not to walk your path, but to say which path and avoid which obstacle.
but we will touch more on the qualities required for this journey in a moment. Now today, we have a healing list in a moment that will be read. Would you all join me as the names are read? Let each name sit within the love of your heart. And you think that this is for them. And indeed, they will receive the energy, the intention, the reward. But you sit within the love of your heart for the sake of another, for you. They may receive the benefit. But you also receive beyond measure. So let us sit together as the names are read. And let each sit within our heart full of love. Just for a few minutes. May I have the names now, Brenda? Yes, the names are Karen, Ava, Silvana, Johnny Haywood, Michelle C, Chantel, Daniel, Denise and Steve, Ed, Nicole, Donna, Carl, Mary, Erica, Bob and Kath, Michelle, Teresa, Mark, Warren, Eloise, Felicity, and Aura, Pia, Sonia, Ayla, Julie Kay, Stephanie Baker, Pat McCarthy and Cindy, Shane, Jane, Lorna, Amanda, Craig, and Vince. Thank you. A little bit more love in the world. And more love within your being. Whether you are starting your day or ending it. Now this series of talks is done deliberately at a, let's just call it a more practical or down to earth level. It is looking from a viewpoint, which is very much on the earth, within your life, rather than a viewpoint from above your life. So as a consequence, because the view is different. 
then the expression is also different. What matters within your life is what is right in front of you. We can take you on a journey to be above your life and to look down and to seek greater clarity or wisdom or look into the very veil of truth. But we have selected a series of tools. which I hope will be practical for you. Bring them into your day. Experiment. And see where this takes you. So once more, I step back, but will return at the end. Have you ever had a time in your life where you've sat and you thought, why am I doing this stupid job? Why am I stuck here? Why am I stuck with this person? What's this situation got to do with me? And yet I'm stuck in it. You know, like being on a boat, isn't it? you can't always jump off, can you? And, and you're stuck right in there and you think to yourself, oh, this is ridiculous. What am I doing? Why have I got to endure this? This is just plain monotony and boring. Now, I'm sure at times in your life, you've had them type of jobs or situations, or maybe you, you, you've got a certain, a certain thing that you have to do, which is rather tedious. And, you, and you're there, and it kind of like, well, I've got to do it, I've got to survive it, and it... But I don't really want to, you know, I'd rather be somewhere else doing other things. And when you're in these situations, you can find it's a bit of a spiral, isn't it? The more your mood drives you downward, doesn't it? The more mood you have, the more down you get, the more mood you get, if you know what I mean. And, and then you feel like your situation kind of is all out of control and you don't know what to do. Or maybe you're trying to get somewhere and it's kind of like always on the horizon. It ain't there. But then it's hard work. You just don't know how to get past it, you know? Or maybe you're dealing with a difficult person every day of the week and you don't know how to deal with that. Well, you see, there's a couple of little secrets. And one of the secrets is to look deeper into the topic so if you've got if you've got to work out a certain thing look how it works why does it work that way go deeper into it don't don't avoid it get stuck in and before you know it you could be sanding a whole bunch of things down and, you, and you've done the work because you're watching the way the wood works and the way the dust and the sandpaper all work together. Look deeper into your topic and you'll find that there's more interest. Look right into the very detail and you'll see that it's a marvel. The whole thing's very complex, even though you find it very tedious. And if you've got to deal with a difficult person, look into them deeper. 
you see the ego challenged on the outside and with a bit of depth you see the pain that's behind that and with a bit of depth still you see the person that's there and then again you go deeper and eventually you see the spirit If you stay on the surface, you'll deal with the creation. Your whole enlightenment journey, your whole realisation journey or understanding is really a battle between you and nature. Nature wants to make you live here and now in, in the, the natural world of, well, let's call it matter. But the spirit wants to take you beyond it. And one pulls you back, one pulls you forward. Go deeper into your topic and you'll understand it more. And you see the beauty that lies underneath it. Let's say you're rowing your boat and you're going for, let's say, a mile or something. And, and you're rowing, you think, oh, no. Another 5,000 oar strokes and I'll be there. But if you watch the way the oar goes through the water, the way your hands manipulate, the way the wind blows the waves, look into the detail of who made the boat. There's a certain amount of wonder that's there. See, after problem really is not the situation, it's actually the desire to be beyond the situation. And it's not the rowing the boat that's the problem, it's a, the desire to be on the beach, isn't it? The desire to be there, but you've got to do the work here. And, and what's the secret then? The secret is people think, because of the current world that people live in, they want everything now. And it's like, I'll be instant. And once I've got it, I'll, I'll enjoy it for 30 seconds and I'll throw it away and I want the next thing. It's impatience, isn't it? If you want to be good at anything, rowing boats or even this mediumship stuff, it takes this, this, range of tasks and in this this order it takes patience then persistence but then talent it's not talent first patience and persistence you got to look at life as if you're in it for the long haul you know imagine you won't be the best golfer well You've probably got to hit 500 golf balls a day, ain't you? Every day. And if you want to be that, then, well, you've got to look at your life then as if it's a progress. And, and you're going to make progress over time. You're going to make progress every day. Some days you go backwards or it feels like it, doesn't it? You've got to be persistent and keep on going. But it could have a bit of a conundrum then, isn't it? You've got to look to the future, but live in the moment. You've got to look deep into the moment, but then also know that there's a future, if you know what I mean, but then avoid the future. So then we juggle time, don't we? And you, you think, well, in, in your world, you think I want to be on the beach, but I've got to endure the rowing of the boat. Mm -hmm. The truth is, go deeper into the, the rowing or the boat and then getting to the beach kind of becomes a certainty and it don't matter. All of a sudden, you'll row around the island a couple of times before you decide to land on the beach because you're enjoying it so much. Let's say you're doing a bit of study and you're studying a topic and you find this topic boring. And it's not your cup of tea, but it seems to be something that's really, it doesn't help you one little bit. Why am I doing this for? I'm supposed to be studying that topic, not this topic. Look deeper into it. Explore it. Why does that happen? How does that work? It's like 
looking at a clock or a watch, you take it apart, you look in, you see all the little cogs and things, the little spring and, and the way the little handles work and stuff. All of a sudden, it's miraculous. How that little watch on your, on your wrist, all those little cogs work. How does that happen? Now your watch has some kind of value when you see it, doesn't it? You know, if you look at it close enough, if it, oh, it's wonderful. Well, that topic you don't like studying or that situation you found yourself in that you don't want to be in, if you go deeper into it, you know what you find? You know what you find? You find love and you find beauty. Have you ever looked at your, the hairs on your hand and thought to yourself, look at that, isn't that amazing how that grows? Look at my nails on my fingers. Why? Why have you got that? How's that work? And then life very quickly becomes miraculous. Then the feeling of time has disappeared, hasn't it? It's gone. But if you keep looking deeper into it, your success is guaranteed, isn't it? If you look the deeper the way spirit is or the way spirit works or the way spirit is underlying everything, well, wouldn't you become an expert in it then after a while? Wouldn't you become an expert in your topic or that grumpy person you got to deal with? Don't avoid your situation. Go down deeper into it and explore it. Now, give yourself time and patience. Don't ignore the very basics of life and then talent will come. You see, books can give you a little bit of a cheat, can't they? They can say to you, this is the way life works, and then you somebody else has done the research for you, and you just accept it. And that's all well and good, but it's different if you do it yourself. Go deeper in and discover it. You see, one, in your life, let's say you caught an aeroplane from, oh, I don't know, long distance. Let's say it's 10 hours. That's a nice round number. It doesn't have to be that long. Anyway, you jump on the plane, you sit still, and before you know it, you're traveling along in comfort. You flick a switch and you've got pillows and blankets and you've got televisions to watch and then... And then if you press a button, somebody delivers you a drink and then delivers you food. And you're traveling along at 800 miles an hour or something. And outside that little window, it's minus 55 degrees. And you're blowing into the wind and your airplane's pushing forward. And on the inside, it's kind of like easy, isn't it? Everything you want is a little bit of a push of a button and somebody does it for you. But when you get to the other end, you get off the plane and let's say it's minus 10 or something when you get to wherever. And you meet your friend and they say, how was your flight? And they say, oh, nothing special. Nothing special. You've travelled from one side of the world to the other in, in some degree of luxury, with somebody delivering your food at minus 55 degrees in comfort at 800 miles an hour, and you ain't have to do a thing, and it ain't nothing special. It's miraculous, isn't it? And you'd have to drive to your shop and go and get some 
something from the grocery store and, and you get there and you think, oh, what a boring journey that was. But when you look deeper into it, you see that somebody's made the car and you brought the car and you, you've travelled in it. Somebody's put the road down and you, you've travelled the journey to get to the shops and you get there. You think, nothing special. You see, people are looking externally, aren't they? Not internally. Look, not looking at the wonder of the world. Not looking at the way skin grows over your over your flesh or your bones and stuff. Not looking at the way your digestive system is miraculous. The way knowledge and information goes through your body. You see, you miss the miraculous and take part in the mundane. Yeah, the miraculous is right on the tip of your finger. It's right there. So when you've got this difficult thing you've got to do, or the mundane journey, looking closer, and you see that right there, is an intelligence you know nothing about. A beauty that you never thought existed. And it's right there for you. Simple act of pen and paper is miraculous too, isn't it? By pen work delivers ink, the way the, the paper is there in front of you when you need it. You see, when you come across a problem, the solution is already there waiting for you. We've got to find it. And you, you find it by not being agitated, but buying, be buying, be, be buying, buying, be by being slow and still. Calmness is what the world needs, isn't it? Stillness. Row your boat with full intention, but expecting nothing. Look deeper into the boat and you'll see the beauty that is taking you from one side to another. Look at the way your, your grumpy person is nothing more than an expression of love. And you're seeing the nastiness on the outside and you're missing the love on the inside. And how do you change that? Well, you bring more love, don't you? And that's easy said. Ain't always easy done. Especially when your husband comes home and he's a bit grumpy at a bad day. How do you love him when he's like that? Well, you love him for you. You love him because there's love in your heart. But you let him be the way he's got to be and just love him anyway, even though he's difficult. If you see the grumpiness, it's challenging. It? If you see the love underneath it, then there's beauty. Then let's say all of a sudden your life falls off the rails. You thought you're going right, but it turns out you're going left and you don't want to go that way. And you don't know why all of a sudden I was supposed to do this and now I'm not. I thought I was going there, but I'm not. And all of a sudden then there's panic and drama and, and bad situations. And the first thing you do is hate yourself, don't you? You say, oh, I'm a bad person. Why has this happened to me? Why can't my life be nice and simple like those rich people on the TV. 
but then this spiral begins of being, let's say, beaten up a little bit by your own self. But when your life falls apart, and let's be dramatic over it, let's say it falls apart at a grand scale. The truth is, there ain't nothing wrong at all. You're perfectly well underneath all of that draw, trauma and, and problem and difficulty and, and, and all those difficult situations. You can always find something beautiful because beauty underlines everything. Every situation, love is there. Every, no exceptions. Every situation, love is there. You've got to find it again, that's all. And, and it could be love for yourself, love for another, love for where you are. Love for the fact that I'm, I've still got me health or love for myself, I've still got part of my health. Love that I still got a life. Bring yourself back into the gratitude of what you've got. See the beauty underneath it. See the love that exists. And you'll find that even in the most monotonous of tasks, the very core of it all, the difficult person, there's something deeper to be known. And then there's something deeper to be experienced, the love. So have no fear. You're fully loved in where you are. The difficulty is where you're looking and where you're looking from. I know the other personalities here like to use the, the phrase, it's not what you see, it's where you're looking from that's important. And if we bring it down to the lowest level where I sit, I don't mean the lowest in terms of evolution, although I do wonder sometimes. And it's really about, oh, am I looking at this situation through agitation or through calmness? And when I look at a situation through that calm mind, the acceptance of this is where I am today, then the ability to look deep into the topic, look beyond the grumpiness, beyond the challenges that you face becomes available to you. You're so lucky, you know, to live in a world where you don't have to make bread every day or grow crops every day just to live or fetch water or, or worry about certain situations. You're so lucky to be there. And even those people which are in the most drastic situations, when they come to my side, they see that they were lucky to have a viewpoint of life. Much of spirit doesn't look at life. Much of spirit is waiting for a life to observe. You think, what's he talking about? Well, if you think of spirit like an ocean, 
Well, not all of ocean can be a wave, can it? Only bits of it at a time. And when you look at the amount of ocean there is, the amount of waves there are, well, obviously waves are just a small part, aren't they? You have to wait when you're in the purity of spirit, not the astral realm, but in the purity of spirit, you have to wait for your turn to observe a life. That's kind of a bit of a strange thing to say if you don't understand it. So you haven't come here and here, I mean, wherever you are, you ain't come here to endure. You've come here to observe the endurance. And what choice you have is how much love you can allow into that life at any time. That's all the choices you have in pure spirit. How much love is in the world. Think about it. You probably think I'm talking crazy. But you see how much love you have in your life is the only thing you take from the physical world, isn't it? Some of you think, well, no, I'm taking memory. That memory exists in the ether. So if you leave the physical world and come into whatever awaits you, it's the amount of love that you have, that you've allowed. Anyway, look, I'm beginning to ramble a little bit, I suppose, get off topic, let the old mouth go working the way it wants to. I'm going to say it once more, come into the simplicity. Be grateful for what you have there. Go deeper in, be persistent, have patience. Talent can be revealed with patience. It's not required first, later. It's like learning, it's like learning an instrument, isn't it? Have you got talent first thing or do you have to practice playing the piano for a bit of time before the talent reveals itself? Generally, it takes time, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And then you discover you have a talent or don't. But if you keep practicing, the talent will become manifest. All right, philosophy over. God bless you all. Take care. ta -ra. There are times in your life that you need deep philosophy and other times you need practical advice. The depth of your understanding can be through one into the other. So through detail into the expansion.
through meditation into the spiritual or formless realm. By looking closer at a flower, without judgment, without labels or expectation, that flower can take you into eternity. By simply being with your animal friend. or your human friend, by being open, not closed, by allowing your friend to take you into the realm of trust and truth, then spirit. And the great beyond. can all happen through the flower, through the eyes of a dog, through the wonder of the leaves on the tree. By being with your breath, and seeing the detail that lies beyond the physical world. God bless you all. Until next week. We will return again.